All right, so let's go over some of the options for the Mimic control in a bit in a bit more detail. If you go to the options box, you'll notice that there are a few um, checkboxes for you to tick. And let's just start by having none of these uh, and just see what we got. Uh, so in this case, you get a hierarchy and it's only um, affecting the pose of the original hierarchy. But uh, the first thing you notice that you have these you have two influences now. So this rigid here is being guided by both the new control that we make, uh, the new mimic, and also the original constraint that it already had on it. Because when you make a chain, you, you create these default constraints, uh, which try and sort of match the original pose and your original animation. Uh, so the first checkbox is actually to, to counteract that. So if I just undo that, and if I make another one, but this time I I tick the make exclusive, uh, which as the, the help below suggests that it disables any other constraints. So in this case, it will disable the constraints uh, from the original chain. So now this um, mimic will now do the same thing, but it will be the only one uh, affecting the joint chain. All right, uh, let's carry on. So the next one, uh, adds a hard pin and just like the the regular hard pin uh, it adds one for each of the controller uh, each of the controllers in this chain uh, so you'll notice that now you have uh, an extra option here uh, on each of the mimic controls you have a hard pin attribute uh, it defaults to inherit which means that it just uses whatever the root has uh, in this case it's set to off so if we set this to on you'll notice that all of the rigids snap to this um, mimic control. And then the same thing goes for, for each of them. So this is the same as hard pinning each of them. Uh, and this can be useful for, well, let's say this is the, the animation and you didn't want physics to actually start until later on. So let's say you go from here and then at this point, do a little twirl perhaps like that. Uh, and then you want a simulation to start, say, in the middle of this gun, uh, in the middle in the middle of this uh, motion here. Uh, so then you'd go hard pin off. So now it would inherit that motion from the hard pin. Uh, but then the question is, okay, you can transition out of animation into physics, but what about the other way around? Right, that's the more tricky. That's the more tricky part. Uh, and that's where the next checkbox comes in. So let me just undo this. If I have enough undos. Okay, there we go. So the next checkbox is to add a soft pin, which just like the, the normal soft pin, uh, it just adds a soft pin to each of the mimic controls. So uh, like before, you get the default pose constraints and they are exclusive. And you also get the hard pin because we kept that checkbox. Uh, but now you also have this soft pin constraint. So uh, per default, if you just activate that, you'll see that now it will um, it'll be attracted to this position in world space. So it'll pin this to wherever your mimic control is uh, in world space. And if we just reduce the damping, we can see how it can be like a bit of a jiggly follow follow if you, if you want. Um, and then maybe if we reduced the pose constraint, we'll get some more interesting. Uh, motion. Uh, let's see, not the pin on this one. Something like that. Uh, and so, if you wanted to transition back into physics, let's let's try that. I'm going to remove the pin, and let's start. Let's start with a hard pin, uh, and then I'll animate, say, to here. Um, Let's do something like this. I'm just going to eyeball this. So we'll do something like that. And then here, maybe we'll do this. All right, so now it'll, um, I want it to sort of fly up. So I'll disable the hard pin. Whoop. All right, and then I want it to come back into this position. Uh, and that's for the soft, because if you were to, you can animate this hard pin. So if you just animate that back on, uh, that will work. It'll work just fine. It's just that you won't get the transition, right? So now it'll, it'll, it'll jump, and then it'll just snap right back. 
So you, what you're looking for is a transition from this physical pose back into the animated pose. And so if I were to undo that, and instead of using the hard pin to transition back, I'm going to use the soft pin. So I'm going to do it on all of them at once. So from here to say, uh, almost to here. Uh, so this is kind of an extreme pose because it actually flipped 180, but it just still work. Um, so now it'll go from down there back to <laughs> to up here. Uh, I guess let's make it a little more practical uh, by just re reducing the by making this, this flip a little less extreme. So the flip comes from uh, these keys right here. So I'm just gonna reduce the amount of flipping that it does. Uh, maybe that's too conservative. <laughs> and so it goes down, lands on the floor, and then go, comes back up. Uh, so at this point, now you've transitioned from animation into physics back into animation that is kind of, it's not accurate, it's not entirely overlapping, right? Because uh, even though it's being attracted in world space, there's still gravity. So you can either disable gravity, like you can animate it off, uh, or what I'd like to do is just use the fact that this is quite of a fast motion and just say that, well, I want to add, say, this frame, this is the last uh, transition frame. So from here, I want to go entirely into animation. So now it's going to transition up, whoop. and you know. And if you do get a pop, like, this is something that you can tweak. Um, for example, you could make the damping uh, a bit less so that it transitions sort of quicker into the uh, the pin pose. Uh, so let's try that. This is uh, very tweakable and very subjective, and also depends on the motion. Maybe your motion isn't this fast. Like when you're lucky enough to have a fast uh, motion, oh, that's probably way too much. Uh, let's say half of what it was. Yeah, it was gonna be something like that. So now you have a tr transition back into animation uh, because this, this is not entirely animated and doesn't really need to respect the laws of physics anymore. All right, let's have a look at the next checkbox. Uh, so you notice that when I keyed the um, soft pin, I had to do it on each of them uh, uh, you know, each of them individually. Uh, but that's what the multiplier is for. So just like a regular chain, uh, the, the root control will have this sort of multiplier, which is affecting all of the uh, all of the ridges, all of the constraints at once. So I'll just add that here as well. Uh, selecting the root, there we go. Uh, so now you get these two new uh, nodes here, one for the pose and one for the pin. Uh, and then the next thing you might notice that is that you probably want these attributes uh, a little more uh, neatly arranged uh, in the, the transform itself. Uh, and that's what the, the next checkbox is for. So I'm just going to delete that and make another one. So uh, user attributes is what these attributes are called when they are added onto the transform. So I'm just going to add those. So now you see you get these and they're nicely sort of grouped. Uh, this is the soft pin stuff hard pin stuff, and then the global. So the globals in this case are the multipliers. So you can see that they're connected down here. And all of them will have this sort of yellow, sort of yellow connection. Uh, but speaking of yellow connections, once you have the attributes in the uh, transform itself, you don't really need these anymore. So these are just sort of obstructing, uh, you know, obstructing your view, <laughs> like they, they look uh, kind of ugly. Uh, so that's what the, the next checkbox is for. So I'm going to delete this one more time and clean the channel box. And that will now give you a clean hierarchy uh, of controllers uh, along with a clean look in your channel box as you, uh, as you animate. Uh, and finally, to make things the most clean uh, is that you notice that you also have these values here and they are the original control values. So depending on how your controls are set up, if they are uh, if they are zero already in, in sort of their T-pose, default pose, then they would be zero here as well. But if they're not, uh, which, you know, which might be the case, then you can also choose to freeze the transforms. And that, again, will create uh, a hierarchy. It will be clean. In this case, all of the values will be zero. So if you were to go and uh, you know, go crazy, then if you were to zero these out, you know that they will return to its original 
Pose.